Hello folks and thanks for joining me. This is actually the second time I've tried this. I didn't read this uh, book that we're going to read. I haven't posted in a while because um, it's been over a year and they still will not allow me to get my uh, time back on this channel. And um, I got kind of disgusted with it so it's been a while. But uh, thank you for joining me for this next one. I do have a few small ones I can probably pump out in the time allotted. Now, as I said, I'm at the bottom of this because... Now, this is the 1800s. It is a piece of pure Masonic propaganda. Um, a lot has changed since this was written, as we well know. Uh, the first time I attempted this, I, had, I almost I couldn't finish it, to tell you the truth. So, as with all this material... Uh, I do not endorse or support, in fact, the whole reason I created this, as most people uh, who've been with me long through the years know and read, uh, watched other stuff, um, I'm just presenting the material for what it is, and um, the purpose is actually to show you the flaws in it. So, Freemasonry and its landmarks, author unknown. Why has Freemasonry existed? so long as it has. I claim its existence is due to the fact that it is not a secret society. Tis true we have modes of recognition, rites and ceremonies and secrets in which the profane are not acquainted, nor can its beauties be appreciated without a thorough knowledge of its mystic language, composed as it is of gems of philosophy linked with beautiful symbols, and its charity falls as noiseless noiselessly as the dews of heaven, yet, strictly speaking, it is not a secret society. A secret society is one of those gatherings where mean men meet to discuss the things in strict confidence without giving to the world any knowledge of its mission. Men are condemned to die, plots and conspiracies are entered into, anarchy holds full sway, and deeds that are dark, foul, and damnable are accomplished. The world is not permitted to know of whom it is composed, its place of meeting it is profound secret, and all connected with it are schemers, plotters, atheists, and anarchists, who have the stamp of perdition on their souls. To illustrate my position, I point you to, or I point to the famous Clan Nagael, uh, to the Dread Mafia, and others of the same stamp. Their history is too well known for comment. They are secret societies that breed death and destruction. Their own members, to divulge their dark secrets, meet with instant death. Now, if masonry is paraded as a secret society, its days are numbered. But from this, we have nothing to fear. Now, if it is not a secret society, what is it? It is a private society, formed on the broad basis of brotherly love, relief, and truth. No free man with the essential physical qualifications is denied admission if he be good and true. Its constitutions are for the world to behold. The ancient charges and regulations are open for inspection. Its tenets and cardinal vir uh, its cardinal virtues add luster to its brilliancy. <clears throat> Its laws and jurisprudence are published to the world. These things are not secret. No man, however great his prejudice, will deny the fact that it is, has a good effect on the human race. It has existed while other things of human invention have died. It exists today because it inculcates very, every virtue. It has survived the bulls against it from Rome, the persecution of kings and emperors. There must be a cause for this. While masonry does not offer the past to heaven, yet its banner is painted in gilded letters of faith in God and hope in immortality. This, to my mind, is the key to the situation. Its teachings have always been so pure that its votaries have guarded it with loving fidelity. It cannot die because it is built on a firm foundation, has principles underlying it, that will endure time shall uh, till time shall be no more. No human institution has ever had such vile indignities heaped upon it. The Pope's and the Masonic Society admits the believer and atheist on common platform. They claim that it is and has been engaged in warfare against the church and the governments of the earth. What silly expressions! Had they acquainted themselves with its lectures and its symbolism, had they investigated before passing sentence, they might have been honored by joining this grand procession of the world's greatest men in marching on to the summit and perfection of our aim dash truth now this guy was either very delusional or did not know what he's talking about or just was really good at writing 
propaganda because everybody by now knows that the Pope and the whole group up there are Knights of Malta, etc., on down the line. And uh, other knights, too. I'm not going to get into all of them, all the different labels and stuff. The point is, they're all Freemasons. Uh, so they're not against Freemasonry. That's absurd. Freemasonry has existed because it teaches the moral law. The man who takes the name of God in vain is guilty of a Masonic offense. Well, they all take it in vain the minute they make their first oath. It exists because it has never stooped to the intrigues of politicians. That's a damn lie, isn't it, nowadays, anyway? It exists because it has a universal language found in no other society. It exists because it has a science based on the philosophy of, a, of that religion in which all men agree of that existence of a supreme ruler and the mortality of the soul. When kingdoms and republics have fallen, when wars have been fought between nations, it will exist on the side of conqueror and conquered alike. The idea of supreme ruler is pharaonic. Uh, it's... Uh, kings and queens and stuff like that royalty and all that it has no place with god it's not what god's really about its landmarks are indestructible freemasonry has been established for generations has maintained its peculiar characteristics has never changed its principles have been maintained its esoteric teachings are unaltered not the ceremonial has been conserved its traditions are given as in a as in the aforetime no they're not its landmarks are indestructible devotion of its associates and now as earnest and sincere and impregnable as, as at the beginning. Um, the history it has made is unassailed. The foundations on it which rest are eternal. These facts will hardly be denied even among the incredulous profane. Faith in them is the heritage of the true nation. Well, their symbolism has given them away and we know what they are now, and we know who infiltrated them with the likes of Albert Pikes and Manly P. Halls with their Luciferianism doctrines um, that have infiltrated Freemasonry. And there, if their traditions were at one time pure, and even in their own minds, they are far from it now. With the other, what other human institution can make these claims on the intelligent thinking student of the records of time has written on now as it become was there must therefore be in freemasonry some special vitality some indefinable spirit or essence some superhuman inherent faculty that has operated to secure such results through the ages freemasonry has lived and maintained its character when the rise and fall of empires and revolutions and thought opinion form of governments and and that's because they are responsible for the rise and fall of governments they're behind the rise and fall of governments the rise and fall of laws and social order and all this stuff doesn't matter to them okay emulated many of their devoted adherents yet freemasonry lived it lived because it lives in uh satan's world and uh satan supports it Strong, persistent, reliant, filled with faith, ready for perils. The craft never faltered in a performance of its duties. In caves and mountaintops, the craft met and obeyed the teachings they had received. They thus did the brethren conduct their ceremonies. They were animated by spirit and of a devotion to their association that seemed to partake of solemn recognition as a revelation. Their social relations and their identification with the people of the country, their responsibilities, units, communal organizations of which they were part, rendering them amenable to the profane laws in no wise weakened the ties or bonds that bound them to the fraternity of the craft. They were ever always Freemasons. In other words, it doesn't matter about profane laws to them. They're Freemasons. They follow Freemasonic law. As far as their social relations, and all their uh, philanthropy and all that of course they want to be behind and into everything and about everything and be a part of the community so they can control it uh, the people that are they philanthropical uh, places and and and, and and uh, organizations uh, are responsible for providing stuff like uh, education materials and then they can thereby control those education materials and, and what's in them. That's part of what's happened to our uh, corruption of our uh, education system in this country and how they're programming indoctrination and how it went from education to actual just indoctrination. And um, it's because the, and the, the, there's always in the name of good, oh yes, we're here to help you. We're here to help you. If you want to read the rest of that, I scrolled down. You can pause it. Uh, this is the Rough Ash, August 1892 to 1893. And um, 
I thank you for joining me for this reading. And um, we'll go to the next one. This is reading number 33, by the way, if I didn't say that.